So I've been doing stand-up comedy for 20 years, man, and I've seen a relative amount of success. But here's the thing, because I primarily do the church circuit, most of my comedy is family friendly, and that's all good, but sometimes I believe that adults need to talk about adult stuff, and no kids need to be around. That's why they have children church. The Bible isn't all the way family friendly. I don't think a six year old favorite Bible verse should be let her breast satisfy you at all times. That's not a bad verse. In fact, that's probably one of my favorites. <laughs> and so that's what this show is. I'm saying, listen, family friendliness is not the standard Jesus is. And so we're gonna talk adult themes tonight. So listen, if you don't like adult themes to be addressed in a non-family friendly way, this isn't for you. Some people feel like these shouldn't be done in the church. Some people feel like it's inappropriate. That's why I'm calling this seven jokes I couldn't tell at church. some noise make some noise yeah so uh the first thing i didn't know i was gonna pee a lot i had to pee <laughs> my goodness and nobody tells you that stuff you nobody tells you like hey happy 40th birthday you're gonna start peeing every night <laughs> no man i almost got in an accident trying to find a gas station you know so what I did, I just popped the hood, stood over it, pulled out my pants, like, yeah, awesome. There's a leak in this old building. It's got to move. 43 ain't no joke, man. I know some of y'all like, ha, ha, try 53. The other thing that happened, man, like, so, my wife and I got married, we were 23 and 24. Young, energized, hey! We got six kids, cause we got married so young. Don't stop, get it, get it, that's what. Woo! Man, I turned 42 and I was like, uh, you don't just wanna go to sleep? I was like, man, something's wrong with me. I would never deny something. <laughs> like, girl, go ahead and sleep, we'll be all right, okay. <laughs> Man, I called my dad. I said, Dad, something's going on with me. He was like, what's wrong, son? I said, Dad, uh, Mo, you know, she wanted to have some fun. And I was like, you don't want to watch the rest of the game? <laughs> he was like, yeah, son, that's why you got a DVR. Right? <laughs> See, here's, what I, here's what I know about marriage, man. Like, marriage, like, you just can't show up, fellas, if you just knew. If you're under 30, let me give you a secret. <laughs> you just can't start and expect to have some action right at night. It starts early in the morning. Come on, somebody. You know, like, I mean, you can like, see, man, we function off a of rocket fuel. Hey, all you three, two, one, blast off. We ready, Jess. <laughs> we got some teenagers in here. Sorry, you broke the ticket. <laughs> man, we function off a of rocket fuel. Ladies, they like cruise ships. You gotta start early before you turn that bad boy around, man. I start trying to do the cruise ship, turn into cruise ship. Next thing you know, I'm asleep. <laughs> this stuff is not supposed to happen, man. Next thing you know, I'm like, oh well. Maybe I'll try it next night. <laughs> Couldn't have told me this would be happening when I was 24. Other thing about being 43 now, man, is like I've just been reflecting on my life. And I realize it's a bunch of stuff that I do. I don't even know why I do it. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know why I do this stuff, but then I realize why do I do it? Because somebody told me and it wasn't right. You know, I used to wear a suit and tie to church all the time. And I was like, why do I do this? Like, who said I'm supposed to do it? Now I'm going to church with a white beater on. Praise the Lord. 
Yeah, where them Bibles at? Where them Bibles at? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm like, man, now I've been doing comedy for 19 years, y'all, and there's a lot of jokes that I wanted to tell, but I hadn't told it because I was scared of what the church was going to say. Ha-ha, not anymore. Welcome to Wild Comedy Night. <laughs> yeah. That's right, man. So, you know, so I got six kids, and my kids are cute, but they're also embarrassing. I, my daughter graduated from kindergarten. First of all, I don't understand why they have kindergarten graduations. Right, it's like, you can count to a hundred, so what? It's like, you know, since, since you can count and you can read a little bit, tell your parents to send $162 for a cap and gown. That is a gimmick right there, man. I know a hustle when I see one. So my daughter got up for her speech, man. I was excited. I started crying. My wife was like, it's just rehearsal. Calm down. <laughs> and my daughter got up. She was like, uh, my name is Alicia Earls. And when I grow up, I want to be on The Biggest Loser. <laughs> I have failed you as a father, man. What you see is what you get with me. Like, I try to be the same way on stage, off stage, and I want my kids to be that way. So I brought my son on stage when he was young in front of 2,000 people. Sunday morning, I was speaking and doing comedy, and I brought my son out. I said, Aaron, tell everybody what you want to be when you grow up. My son says, well, my favorite countries to study are Korea and Ghana. And when I grow up, I'm going to put them together to create my own country, and I'm going to name it Ghanaria. <laughs> And there was an old dude on the front row, he was like, ha ha, been there before. <laughs> Your auntie took me. I didn't even know I was going. See, that's one of the jokes I got in trouble for right there. So like, you said gonorrhea in church. I was like, it's a disease. Like, now we have to teach our little children what gonorrhea is. I was like, just tell them it's a disease that you get when you don't listen to the Lord. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> don't read your Bible, you get gonorrhea. I'm telling you, boy. Well, the Bible just makes me itch. I don't know. <laughs> that is funny. But you're really like, you, you can talk about any other disease. We pray for people in church. Hey, pray for Sister Johnson. She has to go through chemo. She's got leukemia. You don't never hear prayer requests from people with STDs. <laughs> Y'all pray for Enrique. You know what I'm saying? Well, came in here a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's the yeah, end. That's, yeah, that's, he's burning. <laughs> It ain't fire shut up in his bones either. That ain't, that ain't. <laughs> See, like we always have, like we have uh, awareness for, for those like diseases. Like I was in a you know a, a 3K breast cancer run. You don't have uh, awareness like that for other diseases. Like a two mile crab walk. <laughs> you ain't never been to a two mile crab walk ever. Yeah. A half clavathon, you know, into a half. Half clavathon, y'all. <laughs> oh, that is funny, man. A 5K syphilis run. That's what we're doing. See what's happening? Some of y'all feel very uncomfortable right now. Because I'm like, like, those people are not supposed to pray. You're not supposed to pray for them people. Yeah, you pray. Just, I, I ain't touching no hands. I ain't doing that. Nah, I ain't laying hands on nobody with no, uh -uh. That's an unspoken right there. I'm like, help him, Lord. But it's so, it's so amazing like how, how like, uh, I grew up in church all my life, and there's certain things that happen that everybody seems to ignore. Like, that nobody ever addresses it, and we just grow up confused. Like, why does Miss Lois got a beard? I don't understand that. Nobody... <laughs> And y'all gonna make me kiss her. <laughs> and she got that old candy. It's just, you know, that candy came in a box, like, oh, I don't know what they call it. Peach something. Just, it smells like, it tastes like carpet. Like, <laughs> 
this stuff bothers me. Like another thing that I was reading the Bible to my kids, right? I love my children. So, so I'm reading through Genesis, and uh, I grew up in one of those King James only churches. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 It's King James. That's what we read. That's the Bible that Paul used. <laughs> Jesus spoke in the King James language. So I, you know, I have King James Bibles in my, you know, in my house, but I'm a new American Standard, NASB. I kind of like the, uh, and I, you know, new International House of Pancakes. That's, that's a good version. And, uh, but this, I was reading through Genesis, and I couldn't find my new version Bibles. So I grabbed the first version that I could. It was my King James. And I, I didn't realize what chapter I was on. I was just... I had to read to my kids. And I grabbed it. Genesis says, uh, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and sat on his ass. <laughs> and my kids looked at me and said, Daddy, you can't say that. I was like, I'm just reading the Bible. See that? It says ass right there. That's what it says. It made me wonder, man, like, man, how many times is ass in the Bible? So I went, you know, I, you know, I got some study tools. I go and get my study tools 86 times in 76 verses. That's a lot of ass, let me tell you. That. A whole lot of ass. So I started studying. I'm like, I can't just stop here. I wonder why is this so, in the Bible so many times? And y'all, I started reading it, and an amazing thing happened. God started speaking to me through these 76 verses. It was amazing. I created a series of sermons called Good Ass Sermons. It's like... <laughs> Somebody just snorted right there. Somebody just snorted. <laughs> that is hilarious. So then I, so I'm starting, I'm starting to read this stuff, and I'm like, oh my goodness, it's speaking to me. And uh, so, but then I realized, I, I felt like, you know, when God speaks to you, you can't just keep it to yourself. Some things you keep to yourself, but some things you gotta share. And I was like, God, how can I share these ass sermons with everybody? <laughs> Nobody's gonna want to hear me get up in the church talk about ass. <laughs> So I was, um, I had to facilitate this large Christian business conference. And uh, one, one gentleman, uh, Bill Hybels, was uh, interviewing T.D. Jakes. And uh, Bill Hybels looked at T.D. Jakes and said, T.D. Jakes, Tom dubbed you as America's pastor. Uh, you're doing movie producing. He said, but I gotta be honest with you. When I heard that you had your own TV show, I said, he's lost his mind. And T.D. Jakes started laughing, he like, <laughs> my wife said the same thing. Then he said, but I realize if I'm gonna reach the people that God intended me to reach who aren't being reached, I can't listen to the confines of the church wall. Yeah. And when he said that, I was like, oh, I know what to do with my sermon series. <laughs> write a devotional. <laughs> Call it a little ass devotional. <laughs> 30 days of ass that will change your life. Y'all think I'm lying. The devotional, like, uh, man, we started to pre-order them tonight. Uh, it's actually in the works right now. I already got some copper in, so don't y'all try that, Pastor Jared. Don't you try to do it. Like, uh, yes. Y'all, it's one verse. Listen to this. Well, here's what shocked me. The gospel showed up when I was studying. Yes, it did. There's one passage in Exodus that says, the firstling of your ass... I was like, I never heard of a firstling of an ass. <laughs> the firstling of your ass must be redeemed by a lamb. And if not, that ass neck should be broken. I was like, Lord have mercy. <laughs> because the first
first thing, you know, in the Bible, like the firstborn of something like, typically is the strongest is what you base everything off of. And the Lord was requiring that, they, you know, that the firstling of the ass had to be sacrificed, uh, had to be redeemed by a lamb. I was like, Lord, I don't care how, how strong your ass is. I don't care how smart your ass is. Your ass needs to be redeemed. By a lamb, come on somebody. I don't care what you got. You got to clean my Lord redeem my ass. Some of y'all like, he going to hell, he going to hell. <laughs> Whatever, my ass been redeemed. Y'all tell I don't care what you say by the blood of the lamb. Guys. <laughs> oh, shoot, man. Yeah, the other thing, when I was studying this stuff, I was blown away of how, like, we knew this, treat your neighbor as you want to be treated, love your neighbor as yourself. But y'all, like when I was reading, I was like, oh snap. It says, uh, if your enemy is in the street and his ass falls on him, <laughs> and he beckons you to help him, you lift up his ass. <laughs> oh my. I was like, Lord, I hear you. It says, if, if, if you find your enemy's ass in the street, don't do his ass any harm. I was like, that's right. God wants you to treat your neighbor's ass right. That's <laughs> Some of y'all about to pass gas because you know you're laughing. I ain't laughing. I ain't laughing. There's, most of us know Numbers 22. We're talking about Balaam. Right? Here's the context. Comedy. I don't mean to give you the sermon, but so so Balak uh, was was scared of Israel. He was like, man, I don't want them to fight. In fact, I heard that there's this dude, this prophet of Israel, who if we pay him money, you know, he was one of them cricket preachers. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you pay him some money, he'll prophesy against the Lord's people. Like, huh? He like called him up. Uh, so so Balak sent sent some folks to Balaam. And they were like, hey, Balaam wants you to come up and prophesy against Israel. He was like, hey, listen, I talked to the Lord. The Lord told me don't go. So they went back and said, Balak, he said he's not coming. He said, okay, send the rest of the folks. So then this time he sent more noblemen, the nobles of noble he sent. And they came to Balaam and they said, Balaam, Balak said if you come, he'll, he'll give you great fame. And great riches. And you're like, hey, your Twitter will blow up. You'll become verified on Instagram. And you will have a lot of money. Balaam like, huh? What'd you say? Now you're talking my language. So the Bible says that Balaam rose up early in the morning and sat on his ass. And while he was going, because God didn't want him to go and speak against Israel, so God sent an angel to stand in the way. Balaam didn't see it, but his ass saw the angel. What I need y'all to know, sometimes you can't see it, but your ass can. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all uncomfortable yet? Y'all uncomfortable? So I, I love reading the Bible. I, I really do. Uh, God changed my life in 1996. Uh, you know, I, I was, I was, a, uh, you know, I say I got saved when I was eight and then, um, you know, puberty happened. <laughs> and it's not like, see, I, I really wanted to serve the Lord, but like nobody was talking to me about regular stuff. Like nobody in my church ever talked to me about sex, but on the bus in the radio, <laughs> woo, I was getting a first class education. Never trust a big butt and a smile. That girl is poison. <laughs> when I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the wall, and in the back of my mind, I hear my conscience call. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Telling me I need a girl who's as sweet as a dog for the first time in my life. I, I see I need love. There I was. Getting in the box of games that I don't play with any hot tonight. I was like, yeah, I'm getting excited. My mama car, I can't come out right now, mama. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Ain't nobody said anything to these boys, Ryan. So that's true. My youth pastors will bail me up the boat. <laughs> Senior pastor was Pastor LL Cool J. <laughs> so I just, man, we stuff that we just didn't learn. And that, and you know, and then everybody was always serious. Like church was serious. <laughs> and even if they did laugh, they had to quantify it or qualify their laugh. Like God had to give them an excuse, you know, a blessing. Like, <laughs> bless the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff is unattractive. Nobody wants to be around that. I praise the Lord every time. Shut up. <laughs> yes, his praises endure forever. All generations. Not, you know, you don't got to say it every five minutes. <laughs> How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> yeah, but you just passed gas and didn't say nothing. <laughs> like when I, I, I learned this and like being around some older people in church, like if, if you pass gas, you don't have to say excuse me. I, it's, it's the weirdest thing. No, older men just, they keep going. One man said, look, I'm going to say, you see, when you go to church, like this time, we need to make sure that we get here early. Because because we, we, you don't know who's coming in here. Like, you just, you just farted and ain't going to say nothing about it. I'm just. And see, here's the thing, like, like. My wife and I, we were at a church, and they were singing this song, talking about how, you know, God made everything, and His glory shows when things that He made functions the way that He made it to, to function. The Lord spoke to me right then. Y'all, for real, I had a revelation. I said, hey, if God made my body a certain way, then when it gets too much air, it comes out. <laughs> That's glorifying the Lord. <laughs> That's the truth, man. Like, hey, if God made my body to fart and I fart, praise him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, what, but, but what do we do? No, it's inappropriate. You're not supposed to do that. The devil is a liar. I ain't going to keep the Lord's work. Mm -mm, I ain't going to push on the spirit. <laughs> work and you gotta apologize for it. That is the devil. I'm telling you that's the devil. Next time you fart, say hallelujah. Praise him. <laughs> Glory to your name, Jesus. Yes. Move in this atmosphere. Move. Move. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. As for me and my house, Oh, ain't no sense how we just twisted stuff, man. You know? I, uh... Okay, y'all let y'all last out. Y'all holding it in, so y'all, okay. Listen, all right, let me stop the show to say, uh, this is a hard, this is the hardest show I've ever done. It really is. I've got, what I, what I realized, these jokes that I've written, uh, they've been, a lot of them been on my, in, in notebooks. My wife would tell you for, 15 plus years and I just been afraid to tell him you know cuz I, I went to seminary uh, you know my dad he's pastor you know pretty affluent back in Virginia and I do these large ministries that shoot family ministries across the country uh, you know my one of my first big video stand-up specials was, was with focus on the family and I like, man, I got these jokes that I want to tell, but if I tell them, I got six kids. <laughs> I got to feed them, you know? And, uh, but what, what I started realizing is like, I, I really believe that most of the jokes, most of the jokes, probably 95% of them come from God. I really do. That 5%, yeah, I ain't gonna tell them, I ain't gonna tell them. <laughs> there got to be some filter, you know what I'm saying? You got to have. I can't tell y'all everything that pops up in here. <laughs> but there's certain things that I just, I, and, and to this day, up until th today, I've been afraid to, um, to tell. I saw some of our good friends and who've been to, who've been to Wiley Common Night every time we've had it. 
And she was like, my husband and I, we're praying for you. You just got to go and be comfortable. I'm like, yeah, but the Pharisees. And I'm like, <gasps> it's not the Pharisees. It's me. I'm the Pharisee. I'm the guy that's, that's, that gets scared to say some of this stuff. And I realized, man, I'm 43. If I died, I would die with a little ass devotional that would change somebody's <laughs> life. And so I just, one day I was talking to, to, to a pastor. I was like, man, I'm frustrated. Another snort. I don't know if that was a snort or a fart. I don't know. But, yeah, right. Come on. Hey. It's a, it's a praise break up in here. Come on, Ragnar. So I, I was talking. Okay, all right. Let me say Y'all are killing me right now, y'all. Years ago, there was this comedy, stand-up comedy show called Deaf Comedy Jam. And you watch Deaf Comedy Jam, they were notorious for laughing, falling out on this in the in the in the aisles, just you know, people getting up, running around. I mean, man, it was so much fun seeing these people laugh. And for the life of me, I don't understand how come God's people can't experience laughter like that. I'm like, yo, y'all, we've been redeemed by the Lamb. You know what I'm saying? Your firstling self has been redeemed. We ought to be free to laugh, but we just so stuck on what other people going to think. So I told this pastor that, like, I got these joke jokes I want to tell, and I can't tell them. He was like, you can tell them at my church. I was like, well, dude, let's do Wiley Comedy Night then. So shout out to Pastor Randy Hill. Man. So, 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 so I, I went to seminary. Like, so the Bible has changed my life. That's what I was saying. God has changed my life through his word. And I, it blew, my, blew me away. Because here's why you got to be real. Because when you got kids and you're not being real, they might grow up and smoke weed. And, um... <laughs> I'm just saying, shoot. I, you know, and, and so, and if we don't teach them like real stuff in God's word, where do you get caught up, man? I, I got to college. I'm like, whoa, yeah, cause Snoop Dogg said, rolling down the street, smoking and uh, sipping. Look at the church people. Whoa, look at that church people. They're like, ah. Oh. They're like, whoa, we freak. No, we look real fine once we got to so all of this weed influence was coming at me. I got to college, I was like, yeah, somebody said, Jason, you funny, but if you smoke weed, you will be really funny. I was like, for real? <laughs> Pass it here then. <laughs> First time I just slept, I didn't know what was going on. I was just sleeping, sleeping. <laughs> What's hysterical right now is some people laugh because they like, he couldn't handle his weed. That's what that is. <laughs> you know who the weed smokers is right now, right now. <laughs> And so I started this, I started smoking marijuana a lot. And, uh, and then one day the Lord grabbed hold of my heart. I was, I was in college, 1996. And uh, I was in church. Well, first of all, like the Lord started showing me that I need to get my life together. Like, well, I can't get it together. I need to let him get it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was like, okay, Lord, yeah, because I do this. I said I wasn't going to do. Um, I can stop getting drunk. That's easy because they throw up in the college bathroom all the time. Man, that don't make any sense. But this weed thing, I don't know. <laughs> because one of my friends came to me. He said, hey, brother. Weed is from the earth. If God didn't want you to smoke it, he wouldn't have put it here. I was like, well, bless the Lord then. Like, and then another dude came to me. He said, listen, man, you know, the high priest over, you know. You know, dudes, he's trying to sound all deep, talking about nothing, like, the high priests, uh, you know, they go up in the mountains and uh, they smoke 
and get high and talk to God. I was like, really? And you got the false God. I got the real one. Uh, boy, he didn't really talk to me. So I started praying over my weed. I sure enough did. First of all, we had a comedy show, but this is the truth. Because some of y'all are real tight right now. You know? This is ridiculous. See, you, see, you see what I'm saying? I can't tell y'all my testimony. Y'all don't want real testimony. Y'all just want sweet stuff. Like, y'all, I cheated on my wife, and the Lord saved me, and now we back together. That's the testimony. Y'all want like, yo, I used to smoke crack. I stole $2,000 of the church's money. People don't want them testimonies. No, no, no the people don't. Like, the grace is only amazing as long as it's comfortable for me. That's the only time the grace is shut up that mess. You know what I'm saying? You know, my ass can see stuff that yours can't. You know what I'm just saying? That shit just killed me. So, you know, like, y'all like this, Jason, but I talk about the smoking weed, Jay Keller. <laughs> This is y'all, I'm telling y'all came in here, I get to talk about stuff I've been wanting to talk about for forever. So I'm just free. If you're here tonight, like, I came here to see JC, we should hire him for his church. Like, I'll be safe out there. This is, this is my midlife crisis project. I just, it, it is, man. I just, y'all, I'm just, can I just be real with y'all? I just don't want to go anymore and say, you know, well, I, I, I never tried it. I want to see if I can just, I got to get this stuff out. Oh, Thank you. All right, so I was smoking weed. Uh, all right. And y'all, like you pray for your food that came from the earth? I was like, Lord, thank you for this weed I'm about to receive. <laughs> Use it to speak to me. I'm serious, man. And then one day I went to church. One day I went to church. And I knew, like, the Lord was working on me hard, man. You know, you listen to slow jams, love songs, and you can think about the Lord. You know, like, how did you get here? You're like, I'm sorry, Jesus! I'm sorry, Jesus! Lean on me when you're not. The Lord, I'm trying to. I'm Proverbs 3. I'm trusting you with all my heart, so I think. <laughs> so man I went to church around this time and the pastor this is why you gotta be real man the pastor said you got some Christians right here in the church that smoke weed I was like And you know when the pastor really hitting you like you can't let everybody know because everybody's laughing at the stuff that normally hits you like oh you know the not amazing stuff everybody laughs at that except for the people who struggle like mm -hmm. and you try to smile at people because they looking at you laughing because they think that you think it's funny you're like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well hold on smell like weed right now my lips purple you know what I'm saying Man, and that dude kept going. He's like, that's right, they'd be right here in church. And he started rolling the blood. I was like, how do you know how to do that? I'm like, man, I was getting so convicted. And my brother, who knew I would pray over my weed, looked back at me like, <laughs> I told you, you stupid. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all, man, it's like the Holy Spirit had the four Nelson, and Jesus was like drop kicking me like, God. And I, man, I went up to the altar. This is like the old school church, you know, where they don't tell you to, uh, you know, fill out a card. <laughs> They're like, no, you raggedy. You come and talk to the Lord for yourself. <laughs> I went out like, oh, Lord, and you know what? And this is one of the realest prayers I ever prayed. I said, Lord, I like smoking weed. <laughs> I do. I, I do it 
Ask you to forgive me knowing I'm going to go back and do it again. And Lord, I like sex too. <laughs> Those are the two things that I don't want to give up. Please teach me why not to do it. Or how to hold myself, you know what I'm saying? Because I want to get married and do it a lot. But right now, I know one day I'm going to live for you. But right now, I just I enjoy sex and weed. And then one day the Lord's like, I'll teach you. He's like, Jason, if everything from the earth is good and meant for your consumption, smoke some poison ivy and see what happens. <laughs> Checkmate, checkmate. So, man, I just, I started reading a lot in the Word, but that messed you up, because if you do struggle or smoke weed, man, uh, don't read the Bible and smoke. That'll mess you up, dude. Because that made it worse, because, you, you know, you misinterpreted, and we weren't biblically trained. You just read the Bible, and if it makes sense, you make up something. Because it was like, it was saying that the high priest offered up incense. And I was in college. I was like, the only reason why people burn incense in the dorm is to hide the weed smell. <laughs> the high priest was smoking weed. That's... <laughs> Just... Y'all, I'm not here now. Y'all acting like I still believe that. Like, oh, <laughs> this is right. Why are we here? Give us a refund. <laughs> That's just how crazy and stupid I was, man. Then I went, you know, so I, I, I started reading the word and understanding it. My dad was like, dude, you need to go to seminary. I was like, okay, what seminary am I going to go to? So then I found one that they, they focus on teaching the word a lot. You know, this is the hallmark of their, of their seminary is when you leave, you go through every, all 66 books. I was like, I'm going there. So I, I graduated from Virginia State University. Woo -woo! <laughs> and stepped foot on Dallas Theological Seminary. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Okay, don't. Okay, yeah. I don't know what that was about. I don't know what stuff going on right here. But my favorite class in seminary was this thing called Bible Study Methods. Changed my life. They taught me this thing called hermeneutics, okay? <laughs> they say, it's the art and science of interpreting scripture. <laughs> That's your hermeneutics. What you gotta do in hermeneutics, you gotta keep the text in its context, okay? <laughs> you gotta understand who it was written to, <laughs> what it was saying to them, okay? You can't take your American mindset to the scripture. You got to put yourself as if you existed then. Read it as if you were then, like you were flying on the wall. Pray over the page until it becomes a stage. That's great if you're just a preacher, but if you're a comedian, it's a whole new world. So I'm reading through Matthew, right? And I saw that Jesus went to the temple on the Sabbath. Oh, oh. And when he walked in there, it was some gangsters in there like, what's up, dude? What's up, this cat? They were called the Pharisees. They kind of like don't like people saying seven jokes they couldn't tell in church. You know what I'm saying? If you talk about weed, they like, How dare he? So they didn't like Jesus. So Jesus came in the temple and Jesus saw this man with the withered hand. And I was doing my hermeneutic, okay? <laughs> Go with me, okay? <laughs> right now we're flying on the wall <laughs> in the church, okay? And Jesus walks in, sees this man with the withered hand, and the scribes and Pharisees are like written on Jesus. Like, what are you doing in here? And Jesus sees this dude, he said, hey man, step forward. The dude with the withered hand is like, all right. <laughs> And then Jesus says, stretch out your hand. And dude was like. <laughs> and I was the fly on the wall. Like he's going <laughs> to. That was a fly. Never mind. I thought that was pretty great. Nobody. Yeah. And Jesus stops the healing process 
to talk to the scribes and Pharisees who were thinking that he shouldn't be healing this dude. And I'm doing my hermeneutic, <laughs> looking at Jesus, looking at the scribes and Pharisees, looking at Jesus, looking. And then I look at the man with the withered hand. What was he doing? Still standing there with his hand out. Why these haters are saying he shouldn't get healed. And I was like, Lord, what was he thinking? What was this poor man thinking? And he was like, will y'all shut up? Will y'all shut up? He's about to heal me and y'all running y'all mouths. You always talking noise. I'm sick of it. I can't take it no more. Easy for you to talk because your hair been straight all your life. I'm telling you, as soon as he heals me, I'm going to slap all of y'all. Shoot, got me hot up in this thing. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Some of y'all think I'm going to hell because I did this. Right? Whatever, I've been redeemed. You know what I mean? I did this at this, this large church, right? I did this show, and I was watching the cameraman. So whenever I do TV or, you know, or, you know, or movies or large churches, I don't pay attention to the laughter of the crowd. I watch the camera people because they're trained not to laugh. And if I can bust them up, I'm killing it, right? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to knock them out. And this, y'all, they laughing, you know. You see the red light switching because one's shaking. The dude in the back, he like, but then when I did that, all of the cameramen stopped laughing. I was like, oh snap, what happened? Uh, I thought I prayed about these jokes, Lord. And so I'm still telling the joke, and um, but I'm trying to figure out why, why these dudes start laughing. I look back, the main dude in the sound booth. Oh no. The dude with the headphones had a withered hand. Shut up, shut up. Y'all just shut up. They shut that mess up. Y'all bunch softies up in here. But he was laughing the hard. He's like, I know that's right. I know that's right. Come on, boy. I was also reading well there was a thing called the pool of Bethesda I don't know if you've ever heard this is amazing there was a pool of Bethesda and what the Bible says is that on occasion God will send an angel down to stir up the pool and the first person in the pool would be healed the first person in this pool would be healed. People would be lining up. You can't tell me that ain't a comedy show. <laughs> a bunch of people fighting over one spot to get healed. Boy! The blind man like, what happened? Did he come yet? Did he come yet? What happened? Where, where, where y'all at? Where y'all at? Where, Been holding that in for 20 years. I, 
My granddaddy, who's a pastor, would never laugh. He never laughed at anything. I did that for him. He peed on himself. He peed on himself. I'm like, I'm telling I've been holding that in since then. Y'all, shut up. Pharisees make me sick. I can't stand. This stuff is in the Bible. And this stuff happens when I'm just spending my quiet time trying to hear from Jesus in the morning. I, try, I don't, y'all, I don't try to make up this. I, I tell you, I'm out of my own business trying not to think so the Lord can speak to me. And this is the stuff that pops up. I was reading. I want to know, like, what does the Bible say about laughter? Because I'm a comedian. So I go and I find a verse about laughter. It says, God has made me laugh. And everybody who hears this will laugh with me. Whoa. I just struck comedy gold. If God and his word says this is funny, and everybody who hears this except for the Pharisees will laugh at this. <laughs> so I do my hermeneutics. I go back to get the context. Y'all, I saw that God told a hundred year old man and his 90 year old wife that they were gonna have a baby. And I'm not even getting weird with it. I'm just like, I'm 43 and don't always, never mind. Uh, to drive, change, something like, if, even if you don't understand, I, you know, just all you gotta do is watch TV. She laughs, she's like, ah! <laughs> he gonna come see me? Uh, he better come see Alice. <laughs> see Alice? Never mind, you gotta be. I thought that was pretty brilliant right there. <laughs> So yo, I'm just, I just, I just like, what did what did this hundred year old man do? Was say, hey man, God, you, you hear the Lord say you gonna get some coochie? I don't know why I see everybody. Yeah, that's yeah. Y'all got secret words for it, like you know what I'm saying. Everybody got the words, you know what I'm saying. Abraham out in the field watching she was Abraham. Turn out the lights. I'm like, what? <laughs> I know Abraham like, oh Lord. You gonna have to help me. Only you can turn the snake into a rod. <laughs> Do your hermeneutics right now. Some of y'all are not in the church. I'm just saying, sometimes you, you pray, man. When you marry, no God, like, Lord, help me. <laughs> But I want to know what it was like after Isaac, baby Isaac, was born, after he got here. Like, how did he eat? They didn't have bottles. They didn't have bottles. Like, you, you know, this is not America. This is not 19, not 2000. Ah! Yo! And you know, husbands, you know, Abraham, you know, was like, ah, I'm 101. <laughs> Look what I did. So he tried to give advice like husbands do in the postpartum time, try to offer advice on how to take care of the baby. Abraham walked into the tent like, Sarah, why you got that boy on your knees? <laughs> She like, oh, 
shut up. <laughs> Powder milk's good for me. <laughs> I heard another snort. That was awesome. Another transparent moment. Uh, I've probably done that joke three times. Twice at home. And um, I got hired to do a pretty wealthy family's private party. I got there, and it was just a bunch of like six old ladies in a room. And they they paid my full honorarium because I guess they they were at this point in their life like, hey, God's blessed us, and we have a good time, just six of us. So I walked in, and uh, I'm telling jokes, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I know how to read a crowd. I'm like, this is the perfect crowd to try this joke on. So it's like six people in this small arena, and they're over 75. What are they gonna do, get on Twitter? <laughs> Do a Google review? <laughs> so I'm like, this is, the, this is the perfect time to do it. So I did the joke, and again, these are wealthy ladies and they're trying to you know, impress each other in one of them's living room. So I, they were laughing some. <laughs> and then when I said Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 90, they like, <laughs> Okay. I felt like, you know, I prayed about my jokes. I'm going to do this one. And I said, uh, but how did Isaac eat? Because they didn't have bottles. They all sat back and I was like, oh, I messed up. I messed up because all of them, you know, how, you know how people do when they Pharisee. And then one of them said, ha! She could have fed him across the room. <laughs> Y'all, the room broke. They started exchanging jokes. I started blushing and got embarrassed. One lady said, she could have fed him and folded up clothes. <laughs> Embarrassing to me, man. I was also reading where uh, Jesus picked his disciples. It's pretty cool, man. When you do your hermeneutics, you see that these weren't the intelligent men. Hey, the way the system was is, you know, after you got a certain age, there was no more school. There was one more school to go to be a rabbi. And you had to go to that school. You had to find a rabbi to teach you. When the rabbi gave you a test. And if you didn't pass the rabbi's test, he sent you back home to take care of the family's. You had to go back and take care of the family's business. All of the dudes that Jesus taught, or that were his disciples, weren't rabbis. <laughs> that means they were losers. <laughs> they weren't the sharpest knives in the bunch. So I'm watching him pick these dudes, man. He picked Andrew, Peter, you know, Matthew. What is the names? <laughs> Tito, Jermaine, Michael. It's funny, y'all start getting nervous when I like, when I named Peter Andrew, y'all like, oh yeah, Andrew was one John. Y'all like, oh snap, who would it? Some people like Mark. No, that's not that's a book in the Bible. That's one of the gospels. Mark was not a disciple. Go to Sunday school. <laughs> Some of y'all just learned something right there. Y'all like, oh. That's pretty cool. But I'm watching him, man, and he's picking regular dudes. Then being the fly on the wall actually a tree because it was outside I was like uh, how come you don't have any female disciples Jesus you ever wonder that 
man, man, since these dudes weren't the sharpest, how are we picking the females? Then I thought about some of the women in my family. Yeah, I said it. I ain't scared of y'all. I ain't scared of y'all. Jesus is like, Peter, get into the boat. Yes, blessed teacher. Matthew, get into the boat. Yes, blessed master. Tamika. <laughs> Tamika. Me have mercy. <laughs> Tamika, was it my tone? Was the way I said it? Like, what was it this time, Tamika? Would, would you just get into the boat? You were asking all these questions, and uh, even Judas got into the boat. <laughs> Well, how long are we gonna be on the other side, Messiah? Tell me that, huh? What do I need to wear? Is my hair gonna get wet? Tell me that. <laughs> Last time I got on the boat, you went downstairs with sleep. All of us were upstairs getting seasick. <laughs> I, ain't go I ain't going, no, peace be still right here, Jesus. <laughs> Hold on, do you have 5,000 forks and hand sanitizer for all these people? <laughs> just can't show up unprepared. <laughs> oh, oh, if your father's house got that many mansions, what I need to know, who gonna clean all those bathrooms? Huh? <laughs> we gonna have to lock some of those, I'm telling you right now. Yeah, these are all those. <laughs> well, wait, oh, oh, but you, okay, you pick up your bed and walk, but your four friends and talk to the roof need to come back and fix this bathroom. <laughs> Sense. It ain't even ours. <laughs> Can you imagine the Garden of Gethsemane? Would have been a completely different story. Right. She's like, hey fellas, and Tamika. Uh, <laughs> I'm about to go pray. Y'all watch as well as pray. Don't go to sleep. Jesus comes back. Yo, what happened? I thought y'all would be asleep. We tried to. <laughs> She wouldn't let us. She had to keep talking, Jesus. She was like, Psst. Matthew. Did you just make that deposit? John, John, did y'all blow out the candles in the upper room? <laughs> well, did you untie the ass like Jesus told you to? You better untie that ass. <laughs> Call you three times, Peter. <laughs> you always doing that. <laughs> One day that's gonna come back to bite you. <laughs> I'm gonna get some chicken. Yeah, um, 
just want to, you know, it's, that Bible stuff is just in me, man. Just growing up in the home that I did, all these preachers in my family. I got an uncle who has half of an index finger. It got cut off. And he was in church preaching one day. He said, the Lord rose in three days. That's two and a half, Doc. That's two and a half. Oh. <laughs> you done messed up the prophecy right now. You know, it's in on two and a half days. <laughs> take your time, girl. Take your time. So uh, I like technology. You know, I got the, I got to do iPhone. I got the black one, you know. Power to my people. And, uh, I was excited when I got the, the black iPhone. I asked Siri what time was my appointment. Siri informed me that February was Black History Month. I was like, man, I knew I should have got the white one. <laughs> but the black one runs faster, I'll keep it. Uh, They laughing, they laughing, laugh. Y'all can laugh, white people. But you laugh, you laugh. We all family in here. We all family. Some of y'all like, I ain't laughing with all these black people in here. I'm gonna wait till I get in the car. See, that's the thing, like, man, see, part of, part of, part of the reason why that joke is awkward for some. It's probably because you don't have, you're not a lot around a lot of people who don't look like you. Because even some black people are like, why you tell that joke? <laughs> you ain't supposed to tell that damn joke. <laughs> what you doing with an iPhone? <laughs> All that reading and carrying on. <laughs> I told you keep two quarters in your pocket. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. But part of part of the reason is just like, man, like a lot of the racist crap that's going on in the country, in the world today, is simply because we forgot what it's like to just sit down and talk with other people. Sit down, just get to know people, invite people in your home who don't look like you. And don't all, and put yourself, here's the thing, put yourself in a position to be taught. Because a lot of times when we, when we cross in racial boundaries, like we have these stigmas that, you know, some people might, you know, might not know as much. We're a little bit more arrogant. That's our problems with, with Americans. So that's why I like to put myself in teaching. Like when Juan comes over to cut the grass, I'm like, dude, <laughs> Show me how you do this flower bed, bro. Show me how. You... Why y'all uncomfortable? I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just. No, because think about it. Think if you have somebody who a different nationality than you, and they cut your lawn, you always act like you're the authority. Or somebody who who's a different race than you, man. It's like sometimes we always take this position of arrogance and not humility. So like, if we want to alleviate the race problem, man, just sit down with people and learn. <coughs> My wife and I, we got a group of friends represent every nationality, man. We call ourselves the United Nations. <laughs> and we sit and talk about stuff. We purposely develop these relationships because I wanted my son and my kids to grow up knowing that dad doesn't say he just loves everybody. He actually shows it. You know, my dad, my parents, we love white people, but I never went to one's house. <laughs> Until I got in college. I'm like, so this is what y'all houses look like. <laughs> it, was, it was weird. I was like, man, I had never been in a white person's house. Yeah, you ever been in a black person's house? No, nope, he's hockey got hockey like that. <laughs> I got the black iPhone, I'll tell you that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, invite, dude, you coming over to our house. Yeah, what you doing tomorrow? Coming to your house. Oh, cool, all right, I can sit with my wife. I, ain't gonna, I, I, I always get in trouble. That what y'all, y'all come over to our house? She's like, I told you, you're getting cleaned up like I told you to. <laughs> yeah, man, so uh, it's funny, man. I, so I love doing international stuff. I get to even co do comedy internationally. A lot of times when I do universities, though, that's when I test out my international jokes. I was doing a show at Cornell University, right? Cornell University, pretty cool. Every nation was represented. I was like, cool, I get to try my jokes. So I'm telling jokes. Every student is laughing. It's pretty amazing. This one guy gives me my favorite laugh of all times. My favorite laugh ever. You snorted number three. <laughs> I tell a joke, everybody's laughing. This dude, Asian guy, gives me my favorite laugh. He says, ah, ah, you're killing me, ah, ah, he's funny, ah, ah, ah. I was like, dude, I will give you a full scholarship if you just travel with me. <laughs> so yeah, so get yourself some international, uh, uh, different nationality, uh, race friends, not racist friends. <laughs> but I think you should, you should get it in brain, like, cause some racist people aren't racist on purpose. <laughs> they were taught that. And uh, you know, sometimes you gotta bear one another's burden. So if like, if one dude's great granddaughter was a grand wizard, and his, and his granddaughter was a grand wizard, and his dad gonna be a grand wizard, he gonna have some problems. He gonna say some stupid stuff. And if I'ma love him and help him, I gotta, I'm gonna have to put up with some stuff. So man, like he got, he was taught some jacked up stuff. Is this uncomfortable for anybody? Nope, uh, it nope. might not be. <laughs> like, oh, <no. laughs> like one of my wife's best friends is Korean. She's pretty cool, man. And like, and one of our, so one of our best friends is white. Got a whole lot of black friends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, one day we're at the table and we were all talking. And one of our friends brought up, I think, stupid conversation. You know, it's like, what color was Jesus? I was like, dude, his blood was red. I'm good. But for the sake of argument, let's talk about it. <laughs> Might as well rock down this road. Right? Let's do the hermeneutics. <laughs> like, yeah, like do your hermeneutics. Like think about the context. You had Jesus, you know, my friend like Jesus is white. I'm like, dude, Jesus preached for more than four hours. <laughs> I want a white man, I tell you that. <laughs> Another one of my friends was like, dude, Jesus was Mexican. <laughs> I was like, that one I believe a little bit. Because my Mexican friends, the only people I know who can feed a bunch of people. <laughs> Two fish and five fajitas. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, I, my my wife's close friend, who's Korean, her mom, sweetest lady ever, and she great sense of humor. And I, why do we always quantify when we talk about different people in race? Like, oh, this black guy, he's so awesome. <laughs> He's a really good guy. Oh, my white friend Dan, he is great. Like, dude, all right, anyway. She's really sweet. And she knows I tell these jokes. She, one day she said, Jason, Jesus was Asian. Jesus was Asian. I was like, really, Miss Lee? The Bible says Jesus was the bread of life, not the rice of life. <laughs> One 
Asian lady here like this. Like, she... Can we laugh at that? Yeah, like, uh, is it, are you okay with that? We've been talking about black people, white people, now we're talking about the eight, y'all like, oh. But what I realized is like, man, like my, my friend's mom, she wanted to be included in the jokes. She invited me to the Asian family reunion to do comedy. I was like, I ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. They ain't gonna karate kick me up in this place. But then I realized like, dude, she invited you, she wants to hear the jokes with all of her family. Like all of, you know, it was like, yeah, it's cool. We were having some fun. And then I started telling the jokes. And then I'm like, think about it. And you know, the Bible says Jesus is the bread of life, not the rice of life. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. He didn't do them. <laughs> we were having fun. Why y'all getting offended, man? Why y'all? We having fun. They like, the granddad, who was like the head honcho of the family, he was like, ah, ah, he's funny, ah. He talking about do the nails, do the nails. Put it on. By stuff like we miss out on gold. Y'all, the, the joke the women hand, right? I, I, I was, I, w I did a men's event. It's like a thousand men in here, in this room, and I, I, I had this in my lineup. Prayed about my jokes, like okay, yep, yeah, the hand, that's gonna work. Walked in, dead center. Uh, oh, no. It's a man with no, sh no shoes on, and no arms. He didn't have on his shoes because he did everything with his feet. And when I got to the point of the withered hand jump, I was like, I can't do it. And God was like, Jason, when are you going to stop being scared of everything and trust me? I was like, Lord, I want to, Lord. <laughs> he ain't got no arm. <laughs> He's like, Jason, tell the joke. I'm like, Lord, I ain't. <laughs> He's like, whose hands do you want your comedy career in? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Obviously yours, Lord, because uh, you ain't got none. time he was having so much fun I was like I didn't want to ruin his fun but because everybody sees him you know and uh y'all so I'm like okay here we go I'm telling it. and as a comedian you can't be scared to tell a joke if you're gonna tell it you're gonna tell it that's what tonight's about for me so y'all I got to the point and I was like y'all what did he say I'm like well y'all shut up that dude said say stupid stuff when you got six kids. <laughs> you know what causes that? I was like, yeah, why you think I keep having them? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like something. 
It's funny, man. Like, so we got six kids, and people are like, oh, God bless you. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not insulted because the Lord blessed me with six kids. You know, like the Bible says, the more you have, the more blessed you are. But we say, the less you have, the more better off you are. <laughs> got it twisted. Uh, Pharisee. <laughs> And it's cool, man, because, you know, six kids, you, you know, you got to be creative. I'm, I'm amazed that after 18 and a half years, my wife's now marriage is like at its best point when I'm not acting a fool. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, we, people say, man, did you, did you always plan to have six kids? I was like, uh, I don't know if you know my testimony. But I stopped having sex in 1996. I got married in 2000. I won't think about nothing, okay? I won't. <laughs> that is funny. Why is sex so hard to talk about to people? Like, why is it so uncomfortable? Like, one of the best things ever. It's not? Like, why y'all like... <laughs> like, like that. Does anybody here like sex? Make some noise if you do. Yeah, right. Well, the single people so awkward right now, they're like, hmm. <laughs> like, send them, Lord, send him. I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Stand up. You know what I'm saying? And it's probably, see, we put so much awkwardness on relationships when these dudes grow up to be 20 and 30. They got a hard time stepping up to the good sisters in church because they scared because we're going to raise them punks. Oh, yeah, I said it. I ain't apologizing. Now dudes all intimidated to talk to girls. That's right. Now them sisters, you know, in the, in the Bible, you know it's like we got all the singles ministries and stuff. We got the marriage ministries. You know, in the Bible, you don't see a lot of like the ministries. There were two types of people. You got the married, married, and the virgins. You know what I'm saying? They can't call it that now. <laughs> they call it the virgin ministry. Like they say, oh, well... Yeah, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> it waited a little while. <laughs> and I just, you know, I got three boys and three girls. And I, my, my, one of my greatest desires is to raise some godly men Come on. that know how to lead and even, yeah. you know, lead in relationships and listen in relationships. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Know how to trust a woman and let her do what God's called her to do and not be intimidated by a woman's power. Mm. You know, I got a powerful wife. Yes. And you know what? I know, thank you, yes, clap for that. I ain't know it all the time. You know what? I slap on it till I got two black eyes. I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. So. <laughs> Remember, I wasn't taught about relationships. I had to figure this stuff out. And I don't want my sons to figure this stuff out on their own. I believe heavily in discipling my kids and teaching them, right? And I believe if, like, if, if people teach our kids before we do, we already miss them more. So I taught my kids early, man. My son, I was a youth pastor until I got fired. And, um... <laughs> So they, you know, my son would always see me talking to boy, you know, talking to boys about, you know, their problems and stuff. So then one day my son came to me, he was in kindergarten. No, first grade, first grade. He was in first grade and came to me at 9.30 at night on a school night. He said, Dad, I gotta talk to you. I was like, okay, son, 9.30? Bedtime was 30 minutes ago. I was like, what's wrong? He said, Dad, it's, um, it's this girl in my class. And um, I think she's pretty. And uh, I can't focus. And you know how you've been telling me to focus in school? I, I, I can't. I was like, boy, now I'm going to tell you something now. There's a moment in every father's life of his son. When his son shows an interest in a girl, you're like, woo, can check that one off my list. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, am I right? Every day, like, woo, okay. Woo, we don't got to deal with that one. 
So this is a school night. I went and got a big bowl of potato chips, not just a bag. I got the whole bag, dumped them in a big bowl, and got some Kool-Aid. <laughs> and we sat down on the table. I said, come on, son, let's eat and talk. I don't care about going to school in the morning. I said, dude, you think you have a hard time focusing? You should have seen the dude who saw the first woman. Right. He looked at her, he was like, whoa, man. <laughs> like he saw, he started making you a bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. He's like, now I know what a bone her is. <laughs> And we talked about it. And I, know, I used to teach. I used to teach school in the hood in Virginia. And I know the kids, whether kids in the hood, kids in the suburbs, when they expose the stuff, they take it to their friends. When I was teaching, this, this kindergartner grabbed the girl's legs, held them up and started dancing. Like, yeah, he learned that somewhere. So I knew if my son was having hard time focus on a girl like we need to start needing having just some basic conversations i was like son that's natural for you to be attracted by a girl like that she's supposed to make you feel all focused because boy your mama never mind boy uh, <laughs> what was i saying <laughs> And I'm like, man, but there, there's certain things that, like, you know, in the Bible you even see when dudes, some dudes like girls that they would talk to their parents and their parents would talk to them. So, man, one day God's gonna bless you with a wife and she it, we don't know. Right now, I don't think she is. <laughs> but let's keep praying about it. You know, you don't wanna tell them, no, stop doing that. Like, no, nah. you tell them to stop doing that. Okay, I stop liking girls. Oh, uh, all right, never mind. All right, so. So man, so I said, all right, and then kids, kids, gonna, they gonna get you to try to talk to her all the time. Like, do you like her? I said, even some kids talk about like humping. <laughs> yeah, humping, y'all know humping, yeah. Like, yeah. I said, they call it different things, you know, like dry boning and humping. Like, you gotta tell your kids these terms, right? Some of y'all like feel very uncomfortable because I said humping on stage and dry boning, you know, like, you know, my, but I, I'm teaching him this so when the other kids tell him that stuff, he knows like that. I like the Bible's, you know, God don't want you to drive on it. <laughs> or humping. Because little kids, I'm telling you, look, y'all know this stuff. Little kids will be humping a book. <laughs> I, I'm so My cousin called, my oldest cousin called me. And she said, because you know, I, I work with youth all the time. The kids, she's like, can you help me with my your, your little cousin? I'm like, what do you do? She said, I caught him humping a book. <laughs> So now I got questions like, what kind of, what kind of book was it? I said, how did you respond? And she said, well, what were you doing? Why were you doing that? And he said, mama, because it was a girl in there. I was like, what in the world was going on in that boy's mind? Like, that like, I mean, we are deprived. Like, she's just gonna do some, y'all Y'all looking at my cousin like, no wonder you got six kids and what's running your family. I know. Don't just everybody do, like, if we talk about the stuff that you did when you little kid, I ain't gonna, yeah, whatever. I was like, what was he, like, was he singing songs? Let me hear you say books, books, and more books. And I was just, Just sinful people, man. So I had to tell my son this. Then when he got this, he was about to go into fifth grade. And I was like, okay, fifth grade, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, that's when the boys really don't know what they're talking about, start talking about specifics. So I, I gotta teach him the specifics. We had already told him that God don't want you humping. That's another form <laughs> of sex. God, sex is good. So one, one, one day I took him on a trip. We're riding. I said, son, this is the talk. I said, son, 
do you know what sex is? He was like, yeah. I was like, okay, teach me. He was like, it's like, you know, Dad, when you, um, like, like on the movies and, I'm like, what movies? <laughs> it's like, you know, like, they, when they just, like, the music start and they just start kissing. And I was like, what else? He was like, you know what? I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I just, you know, I know they, they hug and I'm like, and this is the moment. Like, I gotta go, cause he about to go in school with the boys. I gotta teach him. So we driving. I said, son, like really, like what it really is, is when a man takes his penis. Why y'all awkward right now? Right? Y'all don't know this. Y'all don't, y'all know that this before, y'all. This is awkward for y'all. I was like, man, he takes his penis. And, and puts it in a woman's vagina. He said, why would anybody want to do that? <laughs> That's exactly, y'all, we were driving. I put the car apart. Opened my door and fell out in the middle of the street. I created a memorable moment. I was like, man, I want him to always remember when we had to talk. It was fun. Daddy fell out in the middle of the street, passed out, got dizzy. And he's laughing at me, laughing. He's laughing. He's like, <laughs> like, like, no cars coming, Dad. He's like, I got in the car. He's like, Dad. <laughs> He was like, like that. What's so funny? <laughs> I'm like, son, one day you're gonna regret that you said that, boy. <laughs> you know, like, how foolish was I? <laughs> that is crazy. Man, we came in here, we laughed a lot. And uh, man, we need to laugh a lot more. But more than laughter, this world needs some love. Yeah. And uh, man, my prayer is that I consistently make people laugh. Even uh, to, if you're from my church, I love y'all. It's been good knowing y'all. <laughs> I know our pastor will get some emails. Jason was saying ass on stage. I thought about creating an email address for complaints. Uh, going to hell at jasonrose.com. And if you send a complaint, you are going to hell. Uh, this has been great. My name is Jason Earls. Thank y'all so much.